Hi, welcome to SOS, Storytelling Organization Secrets. This is our podcast. I'm Professor David Boji. I published the first Storytelling Organization article back in 1991, and I published it again over the years. Did a book called Storytelling Organizations. Now here today, I want to talk to you about a new kind of storytelling organization. It's called the Triple Loop. It uses Grace Ann Rosil's studies of ensemble leadership. I participated in those with her. And what I'm going to do is share a, a secret, an SOS, each week with you. We'll do the first one today. Organizations use storytelling as the preferred mode of sense making. We'll then look at the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth secret, working our way up to a kind of an organizational development and consulting approach I call Storytelling Organization 3.0. So stay tuned for that. Be sure and subscribe. So the first secret, organizations use storytelling as a preferred mode of sense making. This is what I'm known for, <laughs> is that phrase. It's not about sharing a list of facts. Studies at Stanford University by a good colleague Joanne Martin proved in her lab studies that people remember items that are dispersed in stories much better than if you give them a list and say, repeat back that list. The point is, stories are not just for entertainment in organizations. By the way, I wear this hat. All storytellers wear hats. <laughs> they teach you that. Uh, but my concept of storytelling organization suggests that understanding organizational dynamics hinges on recognizing the central role of storytelling as the currency of meaning. Now, CSI is Conversational Storytelling Inquiry. It's what Grace Ann and I are doing. And we want people to share their stories in organization, but you need a safe space for that. So creating that safe space is something we help organizations do. And it's not just about sharing, but learning to actively listen. <laughs> the worst thing people do is they, they're rehearsing in their own mind you know, what story they're going to share when it's their turn, rather than actually listening to the other person's story and try to point out something with their own story, you know, linking it to the story they just heard. So I studied uh, this kind of coded version of storytelling in an office supply company. I recorded tapes for eight months, transcribed them every week, and, you know, it was a fun project. Uh, and the CEO, new CEO hired me as a consultant and flew me to Oakland and San Diego and oh to Las Vegas. And I, I recorded the stories people were sharing with me. And I make people comfortable and they open up. And I noticed that they expected that I knew the story. They'd say, hey, Boji, you know the story, right? And I go... No, I don't really know it. <laughs> I, I only been here a week. And then, then they explain it a little more. So every time they use the phrase, you know, I was supposed to fill in the blanks. And this is called uh, by Harold Garfinkel, terse storytelling. You know, just giving you a little code word or a couple of words and you're supposed to fill in the blank. So Doug, the CEO, uh, I came back from going to all these different places in Nevada and California, and he sat me down, and he's, he was new to the company as well. He said, well, what did you learn about the vice president of marketing? I said, well, well you're going to hit me with that right away. He said, absolutely. He said, I want to know how good you are. I said, well, I think he has to be let go. He's uh, engaged in a lot of drinking and he's drunk at parties, and it's not a good image for the firm, but worse than that, he's kind of harassing the women in all these different locations, and they're scared to death of them. And I think you're going to get written up on charges. So my, my sense is to let him go. And he said, yeah, I already did, but I just wanted to know if you were going to tell me the truth. And uh, so we had a good rapport. 
and uh, did a lot of conversational storytelling groups there. And yeah, I noticed that people in different parts of the office supply company and in different regions like San Diego and Oakland and Los Angeles and Nevada would understand things differently because they had different set of experiences. But even the marketing people and the operations people would understand things differently. For example, Doug, the CEO, went to the uh, office after midnight. Now, why did he do that? Because he wanted to meet the people on the loading docks that were packaging all the orders that were going to. They had really good clients like Fox Studios and Walt Disney and, you know, Paramount. I think they liked the movie industry, but they had a lot of other kinds of clients too. Anyway, he met them and he noticed that uh, there was a guy there working on one of the executive's car, washing it, vacuuming it out. I said, what the hell are you doing? That guy should take that car to a car wash or a detail shop. He said, well, they all bring their cars in here, the VPs. And uh, in the night's crew, uh, we, we give them the once over, make them look really good and shiny. And uh, Doug said, well, that's going to stop. So Doug, the next day, he also noticed that there was a parking sign for each <laughs> like preferred parking, reserved parking for each of the VPs. He pulled out one of the signs and banged it on the, the conference table, dirt flying everywhere, and uh, said, look, uh, we have to run an ethical company, and you guys can't act any better than anybody else working here, and you don't have any privileged parking, and you don't have privilege to have people in the warehouse cleaning your car and detailing them and stuff. So... I I got pretty good at doing uh, conversational storytelling inquiry and consulting to this storytelling organization. And we would have these focus groups of uh, suppliers and focus groups of customers. And you know, these executives thought that they didn't know the word on the street was this whole company was for sale. And it would have been is already owned by a British conglomerate who is going to combine it with a Midwestern and an Eastern office supply company. And this Western thing would be the bundle. And people knew that. And, hey, you know, when you're running a sales organization and you're going to transfer to some other conglomerate that's going to own you, uh, the salespeople are going to consider jumping ship and taking their customers with them and these customers were big accounts so i like to use the analogy of this storytelling organization i call tomorrowland you'll find out more about this in the next secret i reveal and the notion is that people working in different parts of the country in an organization or even in the same place but in different rooms, say manufacturing, operations, sales, right? They're going to have a very different understanding of that organization. And the thing of it is, you can only be in one room at the time. So you don't know what's going on in all these other rooms. So Doug employs me as a storytelling consultant because I'm going around all the rooms and I'm finding out what's going on, the history and the language and the lingo and the sort of the coded words and filling the you know blanks. So after eight months, I can kind of understood just about every you know reference. So someone's in the company for years is going to know all these stories. But Doug being new, me being new until I put in the time of actually listening and transcribing and everything else, um, we weren't in the know. I got in the know really quickly and Doug is good. He got in the know really quickly. And very ethical CEO. I really hats off to him, except it's tied here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so it raises some interesting questions. Uh, this whole idea that stories are the sense making currencies of organization, and if we can understand them uh, and learn to listen to them, and eventually we'll learn to shape them. And that's going to be part of the second secret that I'll, I'll tell you next time around. And I'll just give you a little hint. 
conversations of storytelling network an organization together. So first secret is the storytelling is the sense-making currency. Second secret, it's all about conversations. If you're better at conversations, got a better chance of better economic performance. So let's talk about that next time. This is David Boji at SOS, Storytelling Organization Secrets. I've learned over 40 years of experience, so I hope you like it. Share it with a friend. Let me know if there's a secret you want me to get into. All the best. Bye now.